Tata communication carries and drives 30% of the world's internet, which is a less known fact, but it is a fact that we run 30% of the world's internet and rather I keep joking with my MD that, you know, he should be on the Forbes list because if he switches off Tata communication today, one third of the internet goes down for the entire world. These are so latency critical and uh, you know, uh, spots, you, you know how the cars go, right? So all those camera feeds, which are there on the Formula One cars, get fed back to the central command center, get back to London, and they are again then broadcasted around the world. So this entire stuff is done by us as Tata Communications. We had a cable cut during COVID, it took five months to repair. Because again, nobody is available to give us those permissions. There were three cable cuts, one close to Karachi, two close to Bombay. There was one ship which was supposed to go and do all the three repairs. He was not getting permissions from either the Pakistani authorities or the Indian authorities. I'll run you through as to what uh, Tatacom does. What are we doing in the region? And as Ankur highlighted earlier, why Mecca? We call it Mecca region and the full form for Mecca is Middle East, Central Asia and Africa for us in the telco domain. And this is done for a reason because uh, all the 78 countries which are part of this Mecca region are all tightly telecom regulated countries where we don't have a license to operate as a telco. So we are only riding on partnerships or riding on overlay services or riding on our government relationships to drive our business into these markets. So in all other places, India being our home market or Asia Pacific or Europe or Americas, we have a telco license to operate because they are not as tightly regulated. And I think a point which was highlighted earlier was also that is this market more profitable than India? For sure, yes. Because in India, uh, I'll give you a benchmark figure of at a wholesale level how uh, internet is priced, right? I'm not talking about a consumer level. You might be paying a few hundred uh, rupees per gigabits of internet which comes in your homes. But at a wholesale level, India is still around half a cent dollars per meg as a market from an internet standpoint. This uh, region is still at around three dollars per meg. So almost five to six times more expensive than anywhere in the world. And proudly as an Indian company, a uh, part of Tata Group, Tata Communication carries and drives 30% of the world's internet, which is a less known fact but it is a fact that we run 30% of the world's internet and rather I keep joking with my MD that you know he should be on the Forbes list because if he switches off Tata communication today, one third of the internet goes down for the entire world. And uh, unlike how our competitors like a British Telecom or an Orange Business Services, how we operate, so this is a unique way which we thought is you know the right way to operate in this part of the world, which is heavily regulated zero telco license again the message is and uh, so with that this is the being a b2b company this is the state of affairs we are in the customers which we serve you know the big ones uh, you can see are emirates airlines aster healthcare or even a qatar airways or a first abu dhabi bank in the ba uh, and even in the media space and government being strong uh, ministry of foreign affairs uh, the various municipalities, I'll, I'll talk about those use cases in the 5G and the IoT space as well where we operate. And obviously, uh, cyber security, which is uh, very, very important in these nations, in, in these countries. And there's a reason to it, because every one of them is you know, having some kind of a friction with his neighbor. Someone talked about the Qatar blockade, right? So at that time, there were heavy cyber security attacks going into Qatar from all over the place. Saudi, Iran always are a rift so they keep you know attacking each other in terms of you know the domains which they will block through the ddos attacks and all that stuff so uh, and turkey for example and and what we have seen as a regular trend in this part of the world is whenever there are elections in any country that country becomes you know a recipient of a cyber attack uh, now we are approaching for uh, elections in turkey so we'll 
we are again put on standby that guys be with us in you know to mitigate these kind of cyber attacks which uh, may come up during that time so uh, that being said that also gives you a flavor of the evils of internet which we try to mitigate along with offering only internet so for example if we uh, if i proudly carry uh, 30% of the world's internet i also proudly carry say 40 to 50% of the internet for most of the countries which we talked about in the previous slide and these are all government to government engagements so we are about 12000 uh, employees uh, globally as i said 30% of the global internet routes are carried by us as a company uh, 60% of the cloud giants are connected through us and uh, i'll give you an example of that the amazon the microsoft the google uh, meta facebook so the, these top 5 we call them the otts over the top players okay so these otts Uh, so uh, let let me take a step back to tell you how internet actually works so internet is basically uh, for example this gentleman wants to access amazon.com what is amazon.com amazon.com is a content which he wants to access right similarly there will be google.com there will be some websites say youtube.com right these are nothing but contents which are hosted in multiple servers across the world and they have to be brought closer to the eyeballs closer to the consumer as much as possible right so for that purpose the amazon the microsoft the google the youtubes etc of the world will host their content at multiple locations in the world they will have it in india they will have it in dubai they will have it in oman so that when you do www.google.com in the earlier days it used to take some time before that page used to come up in your uh, either on your phone or on a laptop right these days is like a flick the reason is earlier one the the content was far the google.com was probably fetched from usa they didn't have any local presence here now they have or probably that content was fetched through satellite when the submarine cables were not that much well laid the way it is today right so this is this this leads to a point a technical term called latency latency means the delay how much time it takes for the content to reach me is the delay and that delay has to be shortened as much as possible to make the content accessible to anybody who wants to do it right so similar to this there are multiple contents in the world you know even a company's website for example is a content tatacommunications.com if somebody is accessing tatacommunications.com it should the page should open quickly otherwise he may not be interested to look at you know what we are offering so from that perspective this is this is what we offer so one obviously the tata brand which we bring which is which stands for trust and other is the strength there is no one who comes close to this in terms of the number of kilometers of cables which we have laid the closest probably is uh, reliance a uh, geo and arcom put together now uh, which is around 50% of the kilometers which we have laid across the sea and it's a very very complex way i, I can probably I uh, share some videos with you how a submarine cable is laid so they actually go to the depth uh, the the floor of the sea and below the sea they they trench it a meter below and that's how the cable is laid so imagine the kind of sophistication which is involved the kind of cost which is involved a small cable like the one which i showed you from bombay to this place took us around 2 and a half years to build because it is a ship uh, which is sailing continuously it is laying the cable there are divers who are going down they are laying the cables they are anchoring it at different places so it's it's, it's that complex that technical a uh, task and there are only three companies who do it in the world you know the fourth one is now uh, the chinese huawei who has come into this otherwise it used to be subcom uh, which is a us company it used to be alcatel who is a french company there used to be one in noida which i think should restart any time and tata communications again proudly is the media service provider for formula 1 so and we always use this uh, lines that you know if i can do it for formula 1 i can do it for anybody these are so latency critical and uh, you know uh, sports you know, you know how the cars go right so all those camera feeds which are there on the formula 1 cars get fed back to the central command center get back to london and they are again then broadcasted around the world so this entire stuff is done by us as tata communications right so and again very mission it, it the race is there for an hour or a, or a two hour during those two hours it the network just cannot go down it goes down billions of dollars are lost in terms of advertisements so it is that mission critical and you know we are always on our toes whenever there is a race anywhere in the world there are about two which happened recently one in bahrain one in saudi so that's the resilience and that's the kind of uh, robust network we build 
for Formula One, and we've been delivering this since last seven, eight years now. It's all done on Tata Communications network. And uh, it's not only building it, managing it is more difficult. Uh, God forbid if there is a cable cut because of a shark bite or a, a ship running over that anchor and you know breaking the cable. It takes around two months for me to repair that cable and the cost of repair is 10 to 20 thousand dollars per day. So imagine the kind of invoices we have to pay to people to repair these kind of uh, cables. So you can keep in your mind uh, now, now onwards that there is a submarine cable cut. So because of which if, if there's a cable cut say uh, near Chennai for example, I'll be routing the traffic all the way from the other part of the world to come back to Chennai because I have multiple other cables. But that will cause delay to your and you know a bad experience as well from a, from a consumer standpoint. Oh, it happens every year. I don't know for a reason. Uh, we had a terrible uh, multi-cable cut near Egypt a few uh, years back where about four or five cables got cut and that was actually a sabotage. So somebody just went in a boat, he knew the location where it is, he went and he just cut the cables. So sometimes there's a sabotage, sometimes it's an accident, sometimes it's a shark bite. Shark bites are very uh, common because of which cables get cut. We had a cable cut during COVID, it took five months to repair. Because again, nobody is available to give us those permissions. There were three cable cuts, one close to Karachi, two close to Bombay. There was one ship which was supposed to go and do all the three repairs. He was not getting permissions from either the Pakistani authorities or the Indian authorities. So those complexities are there always. Maybe I'll uh, ask a question. Please. Because uh, the one thing which I, which I remember very clearly from my experience in data communications was probably our finest example of a truly global company. Yeah. So I was based in Bangalore or in Bombay at that point of time and my boss was based in Bombay, whose boss was based in Singapore, whose boss was based in Hong Kong, whose boss was based in London, whose boss was again based in Bombay. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that, that was the structure and we still very seamlessly managed to operate across these time zones without a lot of bureaucracy and I think that is very unique to data communication. So maybe just your co thoughts, comments. No, I think it, 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 it still remains the same uh, because uh, unlike uh, TCS and I, uh, I wish Sumanta was here, they operate in a hub and spoke model using more of arbitrage of, you know, the Indian uh, skilled but yet cheap uh, manpower which is available in India and serving the global customers in that arbitrage model. So for them and hub and spoke is okay. Right? For me and hub and spoke doesn't work because I need to have my operations team in each of those countries or continents where my cables are landing. I cannot, I, I cannot take care of a South Africa or America's a submarine cable station sitting in India. It has to be based there, right? Uh, to be close to the suppliers, to be close to you know, where the repairs actually have to happen and so on and so forth. So from that perspective, I think the uh, overall design or how we are wired as a company internally, how we operate, uh, we have to be global. There is no way we can operate like a TCS works. So it has to be a little more decentralized, for a lack of a better word, and that's how we... So maybe if that answers your question, uh, Ankur. So what, is, uh, what are the areas where you start uh, intersecting with, say, TCS? Uh, in the sense that, uh, for example, mobility and IoT services uh, wouldn't... I understand the hardware part of it would be purely under data communications. Yeah. But I'm sure there must be some overlap between it, It's a good question. There is uh, the overlaps which were there are not there anymore. And this is thanks to uh, Chandra when he came. Uh, the imperative was the one Tata, which, uh, which was forced, actually rightfully forced on all the companies. So to say a non-compete, you know, uh, from that standpoint. So I'll answer it. I'll try to answer it in a very simple way. What TCS does and what we do. In the Medina Smart City project, we work together. So those guys were doing, so whenever there are resources required, program management, application to be managed, etc, etc, I don't do anything on the application side. So that's where TCS and their strength comes in. That's one, that's one area. So, and a clear demarcation between them and me, I operate in the WAN space. When I say WAN is wide area network, which I talked about, they are primarily in the LAN space. They are inside the compound, right? So whenever there's a LAN plus WAN play, TCS said, you'll find me and TCS together. So that, that, that's, uh, and yeah, I'll give you a very good example of yesterday when we were at the at JISEC. So I went with the TCS guys. So what Surag was trying to do was he was trying to convert those cybersecurity companies into his, as his customer, saying, I'll manage your backend. Whereas I was trying to onboard them <laughs> as my customer, as an OEM. 
right? So this is the difference in how both the companies are wired, and it's it's a it's a good uh, complement how we go together in the marketplace. So I think that that's pretty much uh, the summary of uh, what we do as a company. Might not be that interesting as a consumer, but at least give, should give you some insight as to the things which you are using on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of technology and effort which is going behind those uh, services, and that's how you've been experiencing those, uh, you know, uh, positive or negative experiences as as an as a consumer. So, question: Is there a possibility that this data tables can be used by satellite? Yes, very good point. Yes, they can be replaced, but not uh, for some time. They will coexist. Uh, there are some trials going on, and I think Elon Musk has taken a leap in this direction with uh, LEO uh, kind of satellites, which are low orbit satellites. Uh, low orbit satellites will ultimately, not now, but at least a decade is what I see, uh, slowly start being a complement to our services. Like, you know, when earlier there were no cables, there was only VSAT. And when, whenever you, if you remember uh, your parents and all, when they used to make an international call, there used to be a lag between you will speak then the voice will come, then you, they will speak, and so on and so forth. That lag is not there anymore. This is because of that shift happening from satellite to submarine. So now what Elon Musk, and those are satellites in high orbit, right? So now Musk and there are other companies as well who are, who are trialing low orbit satellites, which means, and I don't know what they say, that they can wire up the entire world with 61,000 or 67,000 satellites altogether, and then they'll probably start offering internet to using those satellites, but again, the point where I said uh, it will be a, always be a complement and an overlap is when those satellites have to touch down on the floor and also you know connect to an enterprise, that's where we will anyways be required at any point in time. So we will always work in conjunction with them because that download, that uplink, all of it has to happen on the terrestrial side. It cannot happen always on the air. But there are trials going on, so it's a good point. Yes. Rookie question: uh, How does pricing work? Uh, for a company like you, is it based on uh, the uh, use of uh, the equipment? Is it based on number of bits sent via cables? Okay, uh, so uh, what are again, your consulting assignments? Again, a good point. So we, are, so there are various kind of pricing mechanisms. Uh, for various uh, offerings which we have, right? We are primarily a managed services provider, how we position ourselves, right? So, so there is no license sale, there is no uh, separate charge for, so it is basically, to answer your point, paper use, okay? And a fully managed service, which is backed up by a SLA, and obviously there are service credits against an SLA breach if it happens, and this is true and uniform across all our services. We are not a reseller of any hardware, if the hardware is coming as a part of the managed service, so be it, it will be offered. And most of the cases there is, because in this Medina project also, which I highlighted, there are controllers which are installed on the street lights, right? So those are nothing but hardware which we manufacture in India through our other OEM partners, etc. But there is, uh, but the ultimate offering to the customer is he has to pay per street light per month for a particular period of the contract. And internet also the same way, it is per meg per month. That's it. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time.